Let me turn to my final myth, because it is in some ways the most pervasive, the most dangerous, and the most deep-seated. That is a Robin Hood myth. The myth that government has benefited the poor at the expense of the rich. That's the myth. That's the, those are the terms on which many a governmental program is sold. What is the reality? The reality has been described in an article in the Journal of Law and Economics by my colleague George Stigler under the title of Director's Law. And Director is the name of Aaron Director, who is a professor at the University of Chicago Law School. And I might also say my brother-in-law. <laughs> Director's Law is that almost invariably government programs benefit the middle income class at the expense of the very poor and the very rich. Now, that, that may seem to you strange, but let me first explain why it makes logical sense, and second, give you some empirical evidence, starting right here at home with higher education and st the state financing of higher education. On the logical level, you have an economic, a political system under which laws are passed by 51% of the people voting one way against 49% of the people. Now, the way to get a law passed, therefore, is to form a coalition covering 51% of the people. You might think that you would take the bottom 51% versus the top 49%. But the more you think about it, the more you realize that that's not a very effective way to form a coalition. Why? Because those people who are at the bottom tend to be much less skillful in political activity for the very reasons that leave them at the bottom in the economic scale. They are at the bottom in the economic scale because they have low skills or low abilities or low entrepreneurial capacities or have been unfortunate to have been born handicapped or in groups that are discriminated against. But those same features make them relatively less effective in political activity. Who are the most effective people in political activity? Those of us at the, in the middle, in the middle, in the middle classes. Where are the people who are literate? Where are the people who write for the newspapers? Where are the people who mount the hustings? Where are the people who, who provide the candidates? Well, you might say, why doesn't the coalition come from the top all the way down 51%? Well, the answer is the G. Those people at the top, that's a place we can get a lot of money from. And it's worth sacrificing a few votes to get a large fraction of a tax base. And therefore, the logically most reasonable coalition is sort of 51% of the people running from the lower middle class through the upper middle class and leaving out the very rich at the top and the very poor at the bottom. Now, it doesn't always work that way. Sometimes the very rich are able to use their money to get a effective coalition, but most of the time that's the way it works. The middle class control this coalition that you were talking about earlier. Why are they so upset with the way the government is handling their life and, and their share of the pie? I was explaining that to you earlier, and that was because they really don't get anything out of it. They're all, each one separately, you see, it's a fallacy of composition. It is true, every individual program works this way, but what you gain on the one, you lose on the other. And the problem is that you have a system under which each one of us tends to have concentrated interests in certain ways and the costs are diffused. And therefore, each one of us gets our program, but at the expense of paying everybody else's. And so the net outcome is that, uh, that uh, we may be worse off. And what you have is a situation in which you have, uh, as it were, a local equilibrium, but you don't have a global equilibrium. Mm -hmm. in which there, there's an, a, a drastic rearrangement which would make everybody better off. Right. But if that's the situation, why can't we uh, find a, a method to overcome all these impediments and arrive at this global equilibrium? Because if I hope we can. That, the purpose of my talking this way and of your listening <laughs> and of our trying to persuade one another is to try to see if we can find a way to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think the way to do it is to try to wrap these programs together and have an uh, attack uh, attack it through some kind of constitutional limitations on the aggregate amount that can be spent in these ways. Okay, thank you. Thank you.